15. We'll now open the hearing on House Bill 224, presented by Representative Maisie Boyd. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, and thank you, members of the committee. My name is Maisie Boyd. I represent part of the Great Northwest, Worth County, Harrison, Davies, Caldwell, Grundy, just to name a few. So my bill, HB 224, would make the Hawken rifle the official state rifle. The Hawken rifle is a muzzle-loading rifle that was manufactured right here in Missouri in St. Louis by Samuel and Jacob Hawken. The Hawken rifle was not mass-produced and was individually made, making it one of the most superior muzzle-loading rifle of that time around the 1800s. The Hawken brothers were a master of their craft and also upstanding citizens. Samuel Hawken was instrumental in implementing a fire department in St. Louis, and actually when he went to go on a job, he ended up losing his thumb due to an accident. Making an official state rifle is nothing new. Um, this bill was actually filed, I think, in 2011, and nine other states have an official state firearm. There's so much history to this muzzle-loading rifle, and I actually have three or four expert witnesses, including um, the Hawken enthusiast. So if you have any questions about the Hawken rifle, I would say you probably want to ask them because they know more than I do. So with that, if you have any questions for me, I'm happy to answer them. Okay, are there any questions from the committee for the bill sponsor? Representative Barnes. Just to inquire. Proceed. Thanks for coming this evening. Well, thank you for being uh, here. Yes. Uh, I just got one small question. You yeah. said there was a limited amount that was made of these rifles. How many was it? That's a great question. I think I was talking with uh, some of the experts. They, they don't, they're not too for sure. I think just maybe a few hundred. Not, not many. That's okay. That's okay. I would, yeah. I would get it. Right. Yeah, he said he'll, he'll be no. They, these were individualized, like made, so they weren't mass produced. So it was, if you right. wanted one, then they made one. I mean, what's the range of it? Mile, two miles, or. Uh, how how big it how, is? No, how far would it shoot? Oh, that's a great question. They would they would know that. They would know. okay. Yeah, gotcha. so it was kind of part of the fur trade area. Um, it was one of the biggest things they would shoot was like buffalo, bison. Okay. So you don't want to be too close to right. a buffalo. Did, did they use it in the war or? Just so this was made, the Hawken shop was created in like 1820, and I think then the Hawken brothers sold it in 1860, um, but this was just made for the fur trade era. It kind of opened up the West. Okay, great. Yep. Well, no, I just thought I asked a few questions hey, about it there. And I you, like a good question. You've done real good. You've done real well. Oh, thanks. So, uh, thanks for bringing it. Well, thanks. Good to see you this afternoon staying, staying around with us. <laughs> All right. Well, thank you. Bye. Thank you, Representative. Okay, are there any other questions from the committee members for the bill sponsor? Um, are there any, I have one, are there any descendants around of this individual who created and designed this rifle that you know of? Yes, I think there's a, there's a female. Okay. Hawken, yep. Okay, outstanding. All right, I appreciate you bringing this bill forward. And last chance for any questions, seeing none, thank you, Representative. Thank you. Appreciate that. Are there any witnesses here to speak in favor of this legislation? Gentlemen, just uh, make sure that you have filled out a witness form. I Present your name. Has been submitted. Yes. yes. And what's your name, sir? My name is Arthur Russell, Arthur Joseph Russell II, and I am basically the Hawkins Shop. Um, I, I, I'd like to reiterate on, on something that she has said. The Hawkins Brothers... Uh, the, the oldest, Jacob Hawken, came to St. Louis in about 1810, 1812, and they were from a gun-building family up east. And he came down because of the gateway to the west, everything starting moving westward movement, the fur trade and all of that, which was happening with Lewis and Clark at that time, and opened up a gun shop there. And about 10 years later or eight years later, his brother joined him. And so we're talking about 
1815 and period of time like that. Their first guns were for the fur trappers and probably some outfitted the Lewis and Clark expedition and the expeditions that were, were up in the northern part of Missouri. Uh, as time went on and these guns were custom made, usually to the individual, uh, you didn't make a dozen rifles and put them out for sale. You would have rifles of different size, of different length, of different caliber, and used for different purposes. The smaller the bore, the smaller the game you were going to shoot. The larger the rifle or the larger the bore, the more, um, the bigger the animal you could take. And so consequently, as time went on, the uh, need for a gun like this for the fur trappers sort of faded into the westward movement where we were having a uh, a movement over the plains and what we're seeing there are the buffalo. So from about the 1840s up until close to the 1830s up till about the 1850s, just prior to the Civil War, we see the demand and and the demand being great for a buffalo rifle, which is a large bore heavy rifle that the um, the plains rifle, the plains men could carry and shoot buffalo with at a distance of about two or three or four hundred yards. So you're not going a mile like that. The thing I want to really point out to you all is that there's a nasty word that's floating around right now and it's G-U-N. This is not a gun. It is an historic instrument of uh, of survival in what we can speak of. So we're not talking about a state gun. We're not talking about an AR-15 or a Smith & Wesson or a Coke, whatever the devil they have them now. This is a great part of the birth of Missouri. And it was born here. And the reason I'm sitting here is because I had through a series of connecting dots, you will see the opportunity to give it a rebirth. I bought a hawk and rifle from an antique shop. Now, I had a business in St. Louis at that time called a uh, called um, um, Antique Arms Appraisers, AA Appraisers. And we dealt in men's collectibles, Civil War guns primarily, and artifacts of that period. Uh, one of my dealers called me a morning and he said, I just picked up a fine gun you need to own. And I said, what's that? He said, it's a St. Louis gun. It's a hawk and rifle. I said, what's that? He says, well, you see it. So I run over, took a look at it, and it was this beautiful, long gun, like brand spanking new. And I was amazed. I said, yeah, okay, I, I'm interested. What do you want for it? He said, Art, to you, it's only $1,000. And that was 1972. And I'm looking at $1,000 like two, two weeks, three weeks of eating beans. Fell in love with that gun. It was just something that I said, I said, let me think about it. And I thought about it about five minutes, and I said, I'll take it. So I owned that gun for about two or three or four years. And I took it to Friendship, Indiana, and I shot it at the National Muzzle Loading Shoots, and I thoroughly enjoyed it and so forth. And then, lo and behold, a miracle occurred. Hollywood came out with a movie called Jeremiah Johnson. And Jeremiah Johnson had the audacity to steal this damn hawk and rifle from the hands of a dead man out there. And the name hawk and rifle spread throughout the world. And it gained all kinds of recognition to the point that we even had fellows in Italy making hawk and rifles to send to here because there is a big demand for them. Well, I owned one, and I thought, gee, that would be sort of neat. We ought to make a hawk and rifle because it's really popular. Well, everybody was shooting for cheap, and I couldn't, on, my, on our salary and what we were doing, make a 1,000 of these things and make $10 a piece off of them and do business. And so being the only people that owned an original, we started manufacturing. And I had my gunsmith who was the finest gunsmith in the whole United States in repair, restoration, and manufacture of antique guns. A man by the name of Keith Neubauer. And if you look into the Hawk and Rifle, the newer gun, you'll find his name all over the place. 
So we had Keith Newbauer take my original gun and copy it verbatim, all the metal, all the iron, all the wood, everything, and duplicated that gun down to the nth degree. And there were little nuances about that that unless you owned an original, you wouldn't know the difference. One made in Italy or one made in Arkansas or one made someplace else. But our gun sold, we, we sold a kit first. We had it all put together. And our kit cost $350. Why, that was twice as much as you could buy a Thompson Center or one of these other ones from. So we chose to go Rolls Royce rather than Target or Venture. And we built about 60 or 70 guns in the length of the Hawk and Shop's existence. Our guns today, if you can find one made by Keith, is a five to $7,000 gun. Sir, I'm going to give you about two more minutes to tie it up and tell us the necessity of this bill, because I appreciate the, the, your story. The bill but... would be the fact that this gun was born in Missouri. Okay. It was rebirthed in Missouri. It is an internationally known name that is connected to Missouri because of this. And I would sincerely appreciate the fact that if you all could vote this in, it would be a big feather in Missouri's cap. I appreciate your testimony, and I know the uh, bill sponsor has passed out some information that actually has a picture of the rifle on there, and I've held one myself. And, you know, the first thing I thought when I picked it up was, this is an elephant gun. It's uh, sweet. I mean, we, really good. I brought one with me that is up in her office, and I would love to have one of you all come up to take a look at what a mountain man's gun was like. And we, if you want to get some pictures taken with it, because it's worthwhile having it. Right, and I appreciate the fact that you noted that this is an historical piece, and that's what this bill represents. It represents a part of Missouri history that needs to be remembered. So I appreciate you coming forward. Uh, do we have any questions? Representative Fountain Henderson, do you have a inquire. question? Yes, proceed. Okay, I know you said it's up in her office. Is it loaded? Pardon? Is it loaded? Darling, it takes a, a lot to load it. No, ma'am, it's not loaded. You would have to put a bullet down the front of the barrel and shove it down. It's not like a cartridge gun or any gun you've ever known. It's fun to use. It's fun to use. It's to shoot. But no, it's okay. not loaded. And, and uh, just to take a look at it and see what we're talking about historically would be worthwhile. Okay. And the next question is, I know you keep going a 1,000. What, what is it worth today? Uh, an original? Yes. Seventy-five to one hundred and fifty thousand dollars. Oh. <laughs> okay. The one is in her office. How much that one's low? I mean, uh, it's, it's it, it is the the one that we copied off of my original first gun that I had, and I've been offered five thousand for it. Wow. Okay. And it's a reproduction. <laughs> Okay. Do we have any other questions from the committee for this witness? All right, I appreciate it, sir. Thank you very much. So much for giving me the opportunity. Appreciate it. Thank you. Okay, is there anyone else here to speak in favor of House Bill 224? Yes, sir. Please give us your witness form and state your name. Present it in the... Mr. Chairman, I've submitted my witness form. Thank you. Uh, thank you for allowing me to testify. I've uh, submitted a testimony. What's your name, sir? My name is Paul Fennewalt. I'm from North Montauk County, Missouri. Thank you. I'm not an expert, but I'm a, a student of history. I've already provided background on who I am in my written submission, so you can consider the credibility I, you care to give my testimony. Tourism is one of the big drivers of our state's economic prosperity. I think everyone on this committee realizes that. One of the largest focuses of tourism in our state is, is Missouri's history. Even without tourism, I hope you can agree studying and understanding our history is important. If we disregard and discard our history, and along with it the lessons learned from it as some of the woke crowd and other states have done, we lose. There are so many valuable lessons from history that our youth and even we as adults can learn and benefit from. One example is the fur trade of the early 1800s. The mountain men didn't grasp the importance of conservation practices and almost trapped the beaver to extinction. 
their, li their livelihood in many of the western streams. We have a rich frontier history here in Missouri, which involved the westward expansion centered on the main pathway into the west, just a few hundred yards from here, the Missouri River. William Ashley, Missouri's first lieutenant governor, uh, back in the 1820s, 1821, when Missouri became a state, uh, he was credited as the father of the western fur trade in the early to mid-1800s. He came up with the idea of the rendezvous system where he would actually send men west to trap furs and then rather than have them bring them back to St. Louis or to the east, he would go to them, give them supplies, buy their furs at a fur price, and they could stay there trapping. That was revolutionary at that point in time because prior to that, it was just haphazard. If somebody wanted to go west trapping or a Native American wanted to trade with somebody, they would bring the stuff out. So this was revolutionary, that system. A side benefit of their work was they, the, these mountain men explored and documented much of the western United States that later facilitated settlers traveling west and settling in the western states. As part of his fur trade enterprise, in the early 1820s, William Ashley commissioned two St. Louis gunsmiths and gun builders, Jacob and Samuel Hawken, to build the first suitable firearm for use in the western fur trade. He ordered the first Hawken rifle. That is what we come to know now as the Hawken rifle, a large caliber, heavy duty, reliable firearm. The Hawken rifle with its distinct features soon became the standard by which all others were judged. It was rugged and dependable, two qualities mountain men staked their lives on. Even today, the Hawken rifle is a well-known and established icon of the fur trade era. Designating the Hawken rifle will not only help support Missouri tourism by giving it additional recognition, but also encourage others to study our history and learn about Ashley's determination in spite of adversity and challenges. He started his fur trade endeavors in 1822. In 1822, he failed. 1823, he failed. 1824, he failed. Did he give up? No, he kept going in 1825 with his first successful return from the Rocky Mountain Rendezvous. He had the equivalent of over a million dollars of furs that he brought back to St. Louis. And that uh, set him for life in his involvement in politics, running for the U.S. Congress and, and other things that he was doing. He learned from his failures and refined his business plans based on the lessons he learned by evaluating his failures. Successful modern businessmen do the same thing. This is just one example of the lessons our youth need to learn. I know of no other historic firearm associated with Missouri history that would even come close to the Hawken Rifle. And I urge you to pass out of committee and recommend that the Hawken Rifle be designated the State Historic Firearm. I, thank you. I appreciate that. Thank you, sir. Are there any questions for, from the committee for this bill sponsor? Yes, Representative Barnes. Inquire. Proceed. Thank you, sir, uh, for coming and uh, enlightening us on this rifle here. Uh, if I wanted to go see one, other than going to her office, where would I be able to see it at? You can not only see one, but you can shoot one. Come to my house. I leave about 35 miles <laughs> west of here. I've got about four of them. They're all reproductions, but they're all authentic copies of Hawken rifles. No. Uh, you can, if you want to go to a museum, for instance, in that's the, what, that's the what Ralph was. Foster Museum down at uh, College of the Ozarks, there's an original Hawken rifle in that collection there. There's a, a number of them in private collections around the St. Louis area, and I'm sure Art could tell you possibly other museums in the state of Missouri where there are rifles like that. We're in the process of having one built, and I may be speaking out of turn here, but we're having one of the renowned bu current builders of, uh, of copies of Hawk and Rifles building one, and then we are going to try to figure out, do we present that to the governor? Do we present it to the Missouri uh, History, History Museum, or what do we do with that? But there's one being built that we want to get out there, and, and it truly represents what this rifle's about. Great. Yeah, I, you know, I know we have audience that's watching us from home, and people throughout the state of Missouri watching us, and maybe they want to go visit a museum and see this rifle. So that's why I asked you. Uh, 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 if I could it. just add another great venue. We started last year, but every year now we have a Hawken Fest at the Daniel Boone home uh, down near St. Charles. And there is more original Hawken rifles there assembled in one place than has ever been probably assembled at any given time in history. Mm -hmm. There's probably over a million dollars worth of Hawken rifles there. It were there at least last year. It should be there again this August when they have that festival. We're going to bill you for that ad you just put out. Yeah. So. <laughs> and, and in you. fact, there, there'll be an original hawk in there that people can shoot if they want to at that Hawkin Fest. Thanks a lot, sir. Yeah. 
Okay, thank you. On that note, I do welcome people to the 156th district, that's my district of Branson, Missouri, to the museum at the College of the Ozarks. We also, besides the Hawk and Rifle, we have the original car used in the Beverly Hillbillies TV show <laughs> there at the Museum of College of the Ozarks. So it's worth it, coming it, to. If I could add, that's a fabulous museum. Every yes. time we go to Branson, we try to take that in. There's just so much to see there. You can't see it all at one time. Yep, that's very true. Uh, are there any other questions from the committee for this bill sponsor? Or witness, sorry. Seeing none. Thanks, Thank sir. You. Appreciate it. Are there, is there anyone else here to testify in favor of House Bill 224? Please state your name, sir, and make sure you filled out the witness form. My name is Kyle Carroll, and I think Representative Boyd put my uh, name in the hat or where I'm supposed to go. Good deal. Before I start, to answer your question, uh, somebody texted me when you answered, ask how many of these guns actually exist or were ever made, 1,500 to 2,000 ever, so that's why they're so valuable today. But uh, my name is Kyle Carroll. I'm a presiding commissioner in DeKalb County. Um, and one other question that I can answer before I start here is that there are some of these, I don't know how many, but in the Missouri Historical Society in St. Louis. So the tourism aspect of this is pretty, pretty. it could be pretty impactful if this would actually be made, uh, named. You know, just, just the naming bill itself is probably, it's neat and, and school kids will learn that, but I think that what comes after this is what's so beneficial. It's as natural as anything you could do, you know, it's as, that, that gun is a Missouri gun. And you think of the Gateway Arch, and we have that there because it's the Gateway of the West. <clears throat> Well, all these, all everybody that went west, either they went up a flatboat on the river right below us with a hawk and rifle across their lap, or they went west to St. Joe with a hawk and across their saddle horn. So it's just a neat thing, and I appreciate your time. Appreciate, I know it's a long day for you guys. Appreciate you hearing this, uh, and just appreciate you having us here. I uh, I don't have anything else to add. I'd be glad to answer any questions, but I definitely am here in support uh, of the bill. So. Thanks, sir. Are there any questions from the committee for this witness? I, I will say if, if, if we get in trouble, I'm going to get the peach people to come over to our side because uh -oh. I'm all for that, and I, I've never even had one of their peaches that I know of. <laughs> all right. For sure. So. I appreciate that. Yeah, thank thanks, you. sir. Seeing none, appreciate it. Are there any other individuals here to witness in favor of House Bill 224? Yes, sir. Please state your name. Make sure you filled out the witness form. Mr. Chairman, my name is Brian Flowers. I'm a resident of Columbia, Missouri. I have uh, previously filled out the witness uh, statement form. Uh, I want to thank you for the opportunity to speak to, to your committee. Um, I come here as a 30-year-long uh, shooting enthusiast, a firearm safety instructor, and a living uh, historical interpreter of 30 years. I represent and am a founding member of the Arrow Rock Stock and Trade Company. Uh, if, I would certainly invite members of the committee and the chairman to our Arrow Rock State Historic Site, one of our great historic sites uh, in the state of Missouri, uh, where we daily interpret uh, Missouri history. And Missouri history, uh, as you know, is a part of our nation's history. Missouri has uh, some of the greatest uh, history and some of the greatest figures of our history uh, came uh, from Missouri and through Missouri. But I just uh, briefly want to state that uh, for me, this is about connecting our school children and our youth to our, our state's history. And I can think of nothing more um, as a representative uh, more important than to do that. And this, this bill would, uh, would do that and bring to the forefront the importance of uh, the individuals that uh, were from Missouri, um, the Hawken brothers, and, and they're creating something that uh, persisted and lasted and, and contributed to such uh, American history um, beyond themselves in many ways. So uh, thank you very much for, for being able to, to speak. Thank you, sir. And I think when you mentioned the Hawken brothers, it reminded me of the Wright brothers and the individuals that go there to see where the plane was created and first flown and so forth. Wouldn't that be something if we could put this on the map in a similar way to what we've done with the Wright brothers? I think that'd be excellent. Certainly. Um, are there any questions from the committee for this witness? Seeing none. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Is there anyone else here to speak in favor of House Bill 224? Seeing none, is there anyone here to speak in opposition to House Bill 224? Seeing none, is there anyone here to speak for informational purposes only for House Bill 224? 
If no, thank you, and that concludes the hearing on House Bill 224. We will now open the hearing on House Bill 530, sponsored by Representative Clemens. Uh, this bill, just as a point of note, is very similar, if not exact, to the previous bill just heard, but I wanted to give both representatives an opportunity to present their legislation. So if we do have some of the witnesses coming back up, um, if you have additional information to present, that'd be great. And if not, uh, you can just come up and say you sponsor or support this legislation. So, uh, Representative Clemens, proceed. Thank you, Mr. Chair and members of the committee. For the record, my name is State Representative Doug Clemens of the 72nd District, St. Louis County. Um, today I present House Bill 530. House Bill 530, as you've already heard, is exact in language to the House Bill you just recently heard. I don't feel uh, I'd like to burden the committee with repeating a great deal of what's been already said. Let me say this, I'm a historian by hobby. Um, I have a minor in history um, as a result of my degree work and just keeping um, on with my history courses. Um, in September, my gunsmith, Mr. Greg Grimes, gave me a phone call. And uh, Greg was part of the, the crew who put together the replicas um, back, I wanna say in the 1970s. Um, he is the owner of three original weapons at this particular time. He has multiple reproductions. Um, I've gotten to hold one. Um, he extends the invitation to come to my district, to his gun shop, and see a Hawk and Rifle for yourself if you'd like to. That's St. Anne, Missouri. Um, this is a piece of the legacy of the state of Missouri. One of the things that we have to consider in our state is our history. Our rivers, which we talked about earlier, um, now our highways, our rail system, but the influence that this state has had on the entire nation and westward expansion. This is part of our legacy. This is part of our influence on the entire great nation of the United States of America. And I highly encourage and ask this committee to pass this bill forward as this is not just a noticed event for American citizens, but internationally. The the show that was mentioned earlier down at Boone's home, in, down outside of Defiance, that is an internationally attended show. We have people that come there from Europe, Australia, all over the world, because historians know the influence of this particular gun. Um, I will say that I did not know a lot about this particular rifle until I met my gunsmith, who happens to be an aficionado. Um, the National Rifle Association, um, in answer to your inquiry earlier, marks the accuracy of this rifle at about 400 yards, which for the time period is incredible. Um, I will tell you that most of them weighed about 10 and a half pounds by modern standards. That's a pretty light weapon. Um, I, I have a, an M1 carbine myself. That's a seven and a half pound rifle. Um, it's a carbine. It's a short barrel rifle. 10 and a half pounds for either a flintlock or a cap and striker, um, which the, the first rifles produced were flintlock and then they transferred over to a cap and striker. Um, that's incredible. That makes that that's something that you can actually carry and transport. So if you're out on the trails, if you're actually climbing mountains, if you're fur hunting, these are things that, that you need in, in something that's at your side to protect your life in a lot of cases and to make your income. Um, basically, I, I feel that this is something I'm on board with. I think we should all be on board with this. It's, it's time that we acknowledge part of our history, and this is part of our history. It's a big, significant part of our history. It, it says who we are in terms of technology, in terms of literally being trailblazers. And, and with that, I'll be open to any questions. Thank you, Representative. I think you brought forward a word in the last bill. I heard the word historical piece, and that stuck with me. And I think you mentioned the word legacy, and I think that's what we're looking at here and shows the importance of the legislation that you brought forward. So are there any questions from the committee members for this bill sponsor? Representative Barnes. To inquire. Uh, good evening, sir. Good evening, gentlemen. Uh, I just don't want to let you off that easy. Of course not. Okay. Uh, what other names was this gun called, or this rifle? 
So, so this this was also known as the Plains Rifle, actually. Okay. So, so it was loosely based off the well, not loosely, very closely based off of the the famous Kentucky Rifle, um, but they made quite a few improvements to it, including the weight, and um, it was well known as the Plains Rifle. How nice about, question. How about the, the Buffalo Gun? I've heard that term also. How about the rocket, the rocket mountain rifle? Never heard that one, but I'm sure somebody behind me has. Probably didn't heard that. Okay. No, just testing your knowledge on it. So thank you, sir. Thank you. Are there any other questions from the committee for the bill sponsor? Seeing none, thank you, sir. Thank you all. Are there, is there anyone here to speak in favor of House Bill 530? And if so, and you've already filled out a witness form, you don't have to do that again. Is there anyone here to speak in opposition to House Bill 530? Seeing none, is, are, is there anyone here to speak for informational purposes only? Seeing none, thank you. That concludes the hearing on House Bill 530. We will now open the hearing on House Bill 434. Sponsored by Representative Nixon Clark. Representative, please come forward and begin when you're